Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Soil and Margaritas. Today I just want to share the things that I do for my tomatoes. A few people have asked me on Instagram about what kind of tomatoes I have, uh, what do I use to fertilize them, you know, how do I train them up, and I figured that I'll just make a video showing you what I do. And there are many things out there, you guys, that you can do, use, um, not do for tomatoes. It, it just depends on your area, your climate, um, your soil. So do your research before. I am in zone five in central Indiana, and I have a pretty good soil where I am. And it's just a matter of uh, adding good fertilizers to the soil and my tomatoes do the rest. I don't even have to do much to it. So let me start by showing you how I support the tomato plants. The tomatoes that I am growing here are all indeterminate, meaning they're going to grow super tall, super huge if I let them. So I have this setup of um, cattle panels and t posts that I use. The t posts are basically holding the cattle panel in place. And I have the cattle panel come from the bottom of the raised bed about 12 to 15 inches. So they're not really flat with the ground. Um, they have that space because that space is really not usable at the beginning of when your plants are small. It's once they start getting bigger and taller, then that's when you'll use the cattle panel. And basically what I do is that I, I use uh, this green tape. It's, it's stretchy. You'll find them in everywhere that you go looking for tomato supplies. I help the plants go through the cattle panel, sort of like a weaving motion. And then I use the tape for those branches that you know use that i need to help up or sideways And as you can see here, I try to keep the bottom part of the plants very clean. So when the plants are starting to grow bigger and taller, I start trimming the bottom branches so they don't touch the soil. There's no splashing when it rains or when I water. So everything is just looking nice and clean. And it also helps with airflow so the plants don't stay wet for, for any longer periods of time. And I also have tomato plants in containers. And a couple of those are being guided by this jigma thing is called Mighty Crabs that you put in your container or whatever it is that you have your tomato plants, or in this case, two tomato plants that I have here. And the branches you just push through or hook through the sides of this thing and they stay nicely and strong. And for other tomato plants that I have, I use your regular wooden stakes and I just make those in a teepee sort of way and then I use the green tape for attaching the branches on the side. So now let's talk about what I use to fertilize them. I basically use this type of fertilizer here for when I transplant the tomato plants in the ground. I just grab uh, about a cup, a cup and a half, and I work that with the soil before moving my tomato plants on the ground. I really like this one. I have been using it for the past two years. For those that don't know, I just started this year making all these raised beds 
having all kinds of new plants uh, in my garden, in my vegetable garden, and I actually started most of them from seed. Up until this year, I only had experience growing peppers and tomatoes, so I do have some things that I prefer to use when it comes to fertilizers for them, and this is one of them. I also do some liquid fertilizer. This one right here, I think that it works great. Um, you have to do some mixing with water in order to put it there, and yes, it is a bit smelly, but after a couple of days, you can't even tell that it's there anymore. And I don't use, I am not, very disciplined when it comes to you know fertilize every week or every two weeks or every seven to ten days it's just you know i write it down on my calendar and then you know whenever i think of it i go back and be like oh wait it has been two weeks i should probably do something else so the way that i use the fertilizers are that i start with the with this uh, powder mix from the beginning when i transplant the plants into their permanent homes and about two to three weeks later or so i use the liquid fertilizer the fish emulsion with water um, i give them a good water with that and about two weeks later from that then i come back and then i um, then i use another dose of the powder fertilizer and so on so two to three weeks that's when i i try to, to you know be on top of using the fertilizer. It's not something that I am constantly thinking of. So whatever I do with fertilizer, I think is um, helpful versus not doing anything. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know that I recently posted a picture about um, propagating tomato plants and basically getting tomato plants for free. And I think that it's a great way to start new plants but I feel like you have to start doing this early on in order for you to have enough time to get tomatoes. The way that I do this is basically that I start with a good size sucker from the plant. I do a nice clean cut from it and then I bring two to three pieces of that tomato plant um, into water. And yes, I know that a lot of you do this a different way but this is the way that it works for me why do i put it in water because it, it helps to keep the plant alive it helps to develop those roots on the suckers and it's just fun for me to see all those new roots coming along a few days later so once you have the suckers in water you keep the plants in the shade for most of the time outside and about seven to 15 days later, you'll start seeing those roots. And when I see those roots, it's time for me to start thinking where I'm going to place these plants, you know, whether it's a container or next to my other tomato plants, that is obviously up to you. And last year I tried this for the first time. It worked great for me. However, I did start doing this way late in the season. I already had tomatoes, um, red tomatoes on my plants when I started doing this. It was way late in the season. So by the time that this sucker grew and started giving me fruit, it was already time for the first frost to come and I didn't actually get to enjoy the tomatoes at all. So if you grow tomatoes, you already know that you you have to be working constantly to prevent early blight or you know you have to do trimming of the branches you have to make sure that uh, they get good airflow you have to make sure that you have fertilizer get to know people that have been doing that for years in my case i follow gary from the rusted garden if you are not following him you should especially if you're growing all kinds of vegetables in your garden he is just a wealth of knowledge and he is um he shares all his tips on his youtube channel that i'm going to link below one of the things that i learned from him early on is that you have to um be working on preventing diseases you know that you do your trimming of the branches you make sure that there's no branches touching the ground you um, make sure that you have airflow you have a good guidance for your tomatoes all of those things work all of those things help and one of the things that i started doing last year and 
that in my opinion was one of the things that helped me the most when it comes to preventing diseases on tomato plants is using peroxide with water and spraying the leaves and the way that Gary explains is that you have to do this before you start seeing the disease on the tomato plants basically you grab a um, sprayer of your choice in my case i use this two gallon size because well i have a lot of tomato plants and i don't want to be mixing over and over and over uh, so i basically use about two gallons for all my tomato plants i have 40 of them um, and i do the mixing which for my case in my zone eight tablespoons per gallon does the trick for me and i go wild on them you guys i make sure that the leaves are nice and wet literally soaking wet and i even sometimes just spray the ground around them just to make sure that you know if if anything is working its way up to the plants then you know i, I start killing it early on last year i did not have any problems whatsoever with blight um, I did have one major problem with one type of tomato plant, but I think that that plant was just sick to start with and there was nothing that I could do to help it. So it died before it even produced any tomatoes, but that's another topic for another day. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope that it helps you. I hope that, um, I don't know, maybe I answer some of your questions that you had about how and what I do to my tomato plants. If you have any other questions, let me know. If you like these kind of videos, just subscribe to my channel. That will be great help for me, you guys. Until the next video.